here directly from my FICO that you now have a new FICO free plan. This is your FICO score from FICO for free. And what's so, what I love about this is that there's no credit card required. FICO is now giving you a brand new score and report for free. In this video, we're going to show you how to get your FICO score for free along with a free credit report. We're also going to talk about the FICO score factors. Let's get right into it. All right. So as you can see here directly from my FICO that you now have a new FICO free plan. OK, this is your FICO score from FICO for free. OK, you can get your FICO score straight from the people that created it. Plus, you're going to get a free Equifax credit monitoring and a free Equifax credit report every single month with no credit card required. OK, so you can go ahead and start the free plan here or you can click here to compare some of your plans all right now there's some very important information that you need to know in order to actually get this activated okay let's go ahead and break this down number one your subscription will automatically renew monthly at zero dollars for a free plan unless it's canceled you or we may cancel at any time all subscriptions include a FICO score eight and may include additional FICO score versions. Your lender or insurer may use a different FICO score than the versions that you've received from my FICO or another type of credit score altogether. Number two, not all credit report data or transactions are monitored. Monitor credit report data, monitor credit report data change alerts, FICO score updates, FICO score alerts, monitor transactions and alert triggers, timing and frequencies vary by credit bureau and other limitations apply as well. Next, let's go into why 90% of top lenders use the FICO scores and other scores that may vary. Other credit scores can vary as much as 100 points from your FICO score. Get the score that lenders use. So this is what you're gonna get with the free FICO plan. Number one, of course you get your FICO score for free. This will be a FICO score eight based on your Equifax credit data only, okay? Take the mystery out of your score with detailed analysis. It's only gonna come from Equifax along with the credit report. You'll be able to instantly access your credit report from Equifax so you can check for errors that may be holding you back plus get a fresh credit report every single month to help you stay on track next you're going to be able to get 24 7 credit monitoring so this means that credit reports as we know change all the time they will alert you when they detect something new in your equifax credit data proactive monitoring can help you uncover fraud early and avoid nasty surprises when you apply for new credit you will also get score change alerts avoid credit surprises they'll notify you anytime your FICO score from Equifax goes up or down. With the MyFICO app, you can access your scores and alerts on the go. Also, there is more important information. Not all credit report data or transactions are monitored. Monitor credit report data, monitor credit report data change alerts, FICO score updates. They already told me this, so let's keep going. So now you can choose the plan for you. Now, again, this is everything that the free plan is going to come with, okay? So you're going to be able to get a version 8 FICO score from one bureau, you're gonna get the monitoring as well, one bureau credit monitoring as well, one bureau credit reports, and that's essentially what you get for free. And what's so, what I love about this is that there's no credit card required, all right? Now, this is their advanced plan. Now, their advanced plan, this is essentially the plan that's gonna give you all three credit bureaus along with all of your score versions. This is key because a lot of people are missing this. When you don't have your score versions, you're not able to see the same score that you no know, that they can see when it's time to look at your mortgages. So when you're looking for a home, this is how you see your mortgage scores. When you're looking for an auto loan or auto lease, this is how you see those scores. And they have more scores as well. Now, those more scores essentially are for credit cards, personal loans, and so on and so forth. And of course, they just announced the FICO 10 and the FICO 10T. That's in the mix as well. Now, if you do get the $29.95 plan, this is going to update every three months. If you want all of your scores to update every single month, then you have to get the next plan, which is only $10 more. Now that you know how to get the free FICO score and report, let's talk about how your FICO score is created and what those factors are. So what's in your FICO score? 
FICO scores are calculated using many different pieces of credit data in your credit report. This data is grouped into five categories, payment history, which is 35%, and we'll break all of these down so you can understand the pros and cons and some myths that people talk about as well. Amounts owed, which is 30%, lengths of credit history, which is 15%, new credit, which is 10%, and credit mix, which is 10% as well, all right? Let's go ahead and start off with the largest factor that affects your credit score and that is payment history. So payment history, in short, is essentially how you're actually making your payments. Are they on time? If they're not on time, then your score will be affected the most as the most important factor is payment history. So one way to kind of curve this or kind of keep this from happening would be to go ahead and then start putting whatever accounts you can on auto pay. If you put accounts on auto pay, then you're more than likely will be able and be in position where you don't have to worry about, you know, missing a payment. All right. At least you can at least set up the minimum payment or something. Now, of course, you have to make sure that you're able to actually afford whatever that minimum monthly payment is. But I see so many people lose 20 points, 50 points, 100 points by simply not putting something on auto pay. And it was a small bill, $25, $50, $75 a month. And again, I'm not saying that if you are in a position where you're not able to put it on auto pay, then we may need to have a deeper conversation because it may not be a credit issue. It could be an income issue. But let's continue to the next factor. The next factor is going to be amounts owed. Now, it says amounts owed, but this is another word for utilization. So utilization is about is how much you're actually using based on what you have access to. So, for example, if you have a credit card and the limit is, let's say, for example, the credit card limit is a thousand. OK, if your balance is, let's say, six hundred dollars, then that means you're going to take the balance, which is six hundred dollars. And then you're going to divide that by the limit, which in this case is a thousand. So six hundred divided by a thousand equals 60 percent. Anything over seven percent, 10 percent, 30 percent will affect the score. OK. So a lot of people get confused because this is 30% of what makes your score. So a lot of people start saying online and on the internet, everyone's saying, hey, bring your utilization down to 30%. No, you want to be around 7 to 10% ideally to truly maximize your credit score. It's nothing wrong with being at 30%, but to truly see the highest point that your score can be, you want to be anywhere between 7 to 10% utilization. So in that same example, if the limit is a thousand and we want to be at seven to 10 percent utilization, that means we need to have a balance of about 70 to 100 dollars or so. And again, this does not mean that you cannot use your credit cards. This is just to set the expectations that if you do use your credit cards, it most definitely will affect your credit score. OK, but if you don't want to see a lot of movement, if you want to truly maximize your score and wringing out the rag, you need to have a balance of about seven to 10 percent utilization. And then again, just take your limit and multiply that by seven percent, multiply that by, by 10 percent so you can see what that is. Again, don't get me wrong. 30 percent is not bad. It's better than 90 percent. It's better than 60 percent. It's better than 50 percent. But again, to truly see the top score that you can, you most definitely want to have it around 7 to 10 percent utilization. Let's go to the next fact. The next factor is 15 percent, and that is length of credit history. OK, so now length of credit history just essentially means the average age of your accounts. How long have you had accounts open? So you're probably thinking, well, should I have accounts open? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? You have to understand, first off, what type of accounts are actually on the credit reports. You have two different types of accounts. You have revolving accounts and you have installment accounts. Revolving accounts are essentially accounts where the balance is always revolved. Those are typically credit cards, department store cards, things of that sort. Then you have your installment loans. Your installment loans are usually, well, technically it's installment accounts, but they end in the word loan. That would be mortgage loan, student loan, auto loan, and personal loan. Those will be your installment accounts because, again, you're borrowing money and you're paying it back in installments, okay? And so essentially when you have those accounts, you want to say to yourself, okay, how can I have the longest amount of time on an account? 
that will be a credit card. So essentially, as long as you keep the credit card in good standing, which means you're paying the bill on time, you're making sure that the balance is not so crazy where sometimes they'll shut the card down, especially if it's a, um, a, a department store card. You're not um, adding people and removing people back and forth, back and forth as authorized users on your credit card to get that card shut down. Essentially, you're just doing the things that you're supposed to do to keep a credit card open, okay? And for a lot of people, that's the longest account that they've had on their credit reports. You will not be able to get to 800 or it's gonna be difficult to get to 800 without having any revolving credit because if everything's installments, that's essentially meaning that you're always borrowing money to build your credit. You do not want to do that. Revolving accounts are pretty simple to build because you don't have to spend money in order to actually show usage and get you the score that you're looking that you're looking to accomplish. For example, if you wanted to, you know, um, swipe for fifty dollars on a credit card, you can easily pay that credit card off, or you could put the credit card, as I mentioned earlier, putting it on a small bill and putting it on auto pay. You put it on auto pay. Not only, of course, is it the bill's going to get paid, as we mentioned earlier. But now you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the account, you know, stepping out of good standing. OK. And so ideally you want to have uh, don't get me wrong. The longest amount of time on that you have a credit card open, the better. But you really want to have an account open for at least eight to 11 years. The reason why I say eight to 11 years is because that is the recipe to actually get 800 and beyond to get 850, okay? And so that may not necessarily be on your goals list, but no matter what your, your ideal credit score goal is, you most definitely have to make sure that you're keeping your accounts open and that you're keeping them in good standing, all right? Let's go to the next factor. The next factor on the list is gonna be new credit, okay? So new credit is exactly what it says it is, all right? And that's essentially how many accounts have you gotten recently? Recently is anywhere between three months, six months, nine months, pretty much anything that's less than a year, but usually about three to six months. So now, again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting new credit, but you do have to understand that getting new credit accounts will affect your credit score in most cases. If you have a credit profile and everyone's credit profile is gonna be different, but if you have a certain type of credit profile, then your score may not necessarily you know, be stagnant. It could go up, it can go down if you're constantly adding new accounts. But if like, for example, if you are 300, 400, 500, if you added a few accounts, it would actually, you know, help you if you add the right types of accounts. All right. And by the way, if you're not sure what accounts you need to add to improve your credit score, we can help you. You actually can get a custom game plan directly from me after I view your credit report. And we have other options as well that you can learn more about in the description below. But again, you want to make sure that you're keeping these accounts low as far as how many accounts you're actually applying for. Only get what you need. Now, if you don't care about your increase, stuff like that, you don't care about how many new accounts you have, you have a credit card uh, agenda that you're trying to accomplish, that's most definitely possible, okay? But again, you wanna try your best to only apply for accounts when needed. Let's go to the next factor. The next factor is 10% and that's gonna be credit mix, okay? So a credit mix essentially means, when I was talking about a few moments ago about revolving accounts and installment accounts, that's the mix that they're looking for. Now, you don't have to have, um, you know, a set amount of a mix like, oh, how many credit cards to personal loans or installment accounts do I need? There's no set ratio. What they're assuming is through the natural causes of, well, nat not natural causes, but through the natural process of life in America, I should say, um, it's very common that you're going to end up having an auto loan or a mortgage loan or a student loan or a personal loan. Now, if you've never had any of those, that doesn't mean that you cannot improve your score. That just means at some point, your credit score is gonna be looking for you to have some type of installment account. You have to realize something. The credit report is not just a credit report. It's more an adult report card, but it's really designed to actually make sure that you are actually spending money with these financial institutions. Think about it. Your score does better when you actually carry a balance, which allows the bank to make a little bit of money off of you. Same thing goes here. 10% of what is your what makes your credit score is actually going to come from credit mix. This now puts you in a position where you have to get a credit mix. Again, you don't have to feel forced 
things will kind of just naturally happen. But I've seen people, I saw this one lady, she had about 40 something credit cards, no personal loans, student loans, auto loans, mortgage loans, and she was above 840, okay? So you can most definitely get there with the right type of mix, all right? So if you like this video, you're most definitely gonna like the next one and I'll see you there.